Hello everyone, I'm Himanshu Vaswani from Department of Mechanical Engineering and I'm here to discuss with you on the subject Material Science. The subject code is ME207, unit number 4, that's number 25 in this series and the topic are Stainless Steel, Heat Resisting Steel and High Speed Tool Steel. So, let's start today's lecture. Today's learning objective are to provide the students with a basic understanding of stainless steel, heat resisting steel and high speed tool steel. And today's learning outcome will be students will have learned the basics of stainless steel, heat resisting steel, and high speed, high speed tool steel. And students have understood various types of stainless steel and high speed tool steel. So let's start the lecture. So we have been studying about various ferrous metals in the previous lectures like cast iron, free cutting steels, and uh, you can say. So now we are going with. Uh, the steel also we have studied, but now we are going with stainless steel. So you can see a stainless steel is defined as that the steel which when uh, correctly heat treated and finished resists oxidation and corrosive attacks from most corrosive media. Okay, you can see in the diagram on the right hand side, uh, we normally use stainless steel in our domestic uh, work in the kitchen, maybe in the form of spoon or knife. So. Stainless steel has the property that if they are properly heated and finished, then it will help and it will resist oxidation. Okay, it will resist oxidation and corrosive attacks from most corrosive media. So this this uh, this will give its ample um, applications to stainless steel. Okay, due to its resistance to oxidation. Now uh, a short information about stainless steel is that the stainless steel was invented in 1913 by the British metallurgist Harry. In 1871 to 1948. Now, he made the steel containing 13% chromium and the new alloy proved to be highly resistant to corrosion. Chromium reacts with oxygen to form a tough protective film which renews itself in the metal if the metal is pressed. Okay, so the different types of stainless steel are discussed. Like the first one is martensitic stainless steel. So, uh, this is uh, having some percentage of chromium and carbon in it, and so the name is martensitic stainless steel. There's a chromium steel containing 12 to 14 percent chromium and 0.12 to 0.35 percent of carbon are the first stainless steel developed. So, since these steels possess possesses martensitic structure, therefore they are called martensitic stainless steels okay so these steels are magnetic and may be hardened by suitable heat treatment and uh, the hardness obtained depends upon the carbon content now these steels can be easily welded and machined so you can see that this martensitic stainless steel has so much applications that you can say it is magnetic and uh, you can say that these they can be easily welded and machined. So having a good machine that particular steel is also a very good property. Okay. Now when formability, softness, etc. are required in fabrication, so steels having 0.12% maximum carbon is often used in soft condition. You know that the presence of carbon in you can say iron. Is, is giving its own uh, property. So as you increase the percentage of carbon, the hardness increases. And if you if you have a less content of less percentage of carbon, then automatically the the softness is there. So you, they say that when you require formability or softness uh, due to the fabrication process, then the steel is having 0.12 percent of maximum carbon is used in this condition. Now, with increasing carbon, which is possible by hardening and tempering to obtain tensile strength in the range of 600 to 900 Newton per uh, mm square, uh, and combined with tensile, uh, combined with reasonable toughness and ductility. Okay, so in this condition, these steels might find many useful as general applications where mild corrosion resistance is required. Okay, so also with the higher carbon range in the hardened and lightly tempered condition tensile strength of about 1600 newton square may be developed with lower ductility. 
you can see that this martensite stainless steel is of so much has having so much application my just uh, you can say controlling the amount of carbon you can see the different kind of applications it can have okay now then the steel steels may be used where the corrosion conditions are not too severe such as for hydraulics strain and oil pump valves and other engineering components okay however these steels are not suitable for shafts and parts working in contact with non ferrous metals okay that is for bars and brass and bone uh, gun metal bearings and with graphite pack packings because the electrolytic corrosion is likely to occur okay these uh, martensitic stainless steel these are not suitable for shafts and parts that are working in contact with non ferrous metals like you can go to the brass or bronze or gun metal bearings okay we study all these materials in the coming lectures okay and with graphite packings because this electrolytic corrosion likely to occur so after hardening and light tempering these steels develop good cutting properties okay after certain hardening and lightly tempering the uh, during this heat treatment processes you can these steels they develop good cutting Uh, okay. So this uh, this steel, this martensite stainless steel, it will it is having its application maybe in the uh, in different different uh, fields like surgical or dental or in springs or in cutlery. So it 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 is due to the heat treatment processes, a slight heat treatment processes like slight hardening and light tempering process. So these steels develop a good cutting properties. And therefore, hence the applications are there for them also. So the presence of chromium provides good resistance to scaling also, up to a temperature of about 70 degrees centigrade. But it is not suitable where mechanical strength in the temperature range of 600 to 70 degrees centigrade is required. In fact, the cheap resistance of these steels at this temperature is not superior to that of mild steel. But at temperature below 600 degree centigrade, the strength of these steels is better than that of carbon steel, and up to 400 degree centigrade is even better than that of or stainless steel. Okay, it is giving us just a slight variation that at what temperature what is applicable. Okay, so with the just go to the next slide. Then this is ferritic stainless steel. The Second type of stainless steel. They say that the steels containing greater amount of chromium, that is from 16 to 18 percent, and about 0.12 percent carbon, are called as ferritic stainless steel. You can see the how the variation is having. Uh, in the last uh, martensite steel, that it was having carbon from 0.12 to 0.35, but in ferritic stainless steel, it is having about 0.12 percent carbon. And the chromium is varying from 16 to 18 percent. Okay, these steels have better corrosion resistant property than martensite stainless steel. Okay, remember this ferritic stainless steel, these steels have better corrosion property resistant properties than martensite stainless steel. As the steels have little capacity for hardening by heat treatment. Now in so the softer conditions, they possess good ductility and are mainly used as sheet or strip for fold forming and pressing operation for the purpose where modern more moderate uh, corrosion resistance is required. Okay, so if you see that if the in the modern state or in the softened state, they possess good ductility. Okay, and in this case, they can be used as a sheet or a strip of fold forming. And pressing operations also can be done. Okay, where moderate corrosion resistance is required. So if this is this in softened condition also. This ferritic stainless steel has its own application. Maybe in the form of sheet, or maybe in the form of strip, or maybe in the form of either any any pressing operation or coining. Okay, so it is having its application where moderate corrosion resistance is required. So they may be cold. Okay, now the property is that that. They have good corrosion resistant property. So, in the previous uh, applications, also they told that they are used for those operations where medium um, or moderate 
corrosion resistance is required. Okay, Mod moderate corrosion resistance is required. So here the they may be cold work or hot work. They are ferromagnetic. Usually undergo excessive. Okay, usually undergo excessive grain growth during prolonged exposure to elevated temperature, and may develop brittleness after electric. Arc resistance or now these steels have lower strength. Okay, these steels have lower strength at elevated temperatures than martensitic steels. Okay, however, the resistance to scaling and uh, corrosion at elevated temperatures are usually better. So the machinability is good and they show no tendency to intercrystalline corrosion. Okay, now they have their own you can say facility that they show no tendency to interest line corrosion. So uh, when nickel from 1.2 to 1.5 to 2.5 percent is added to 16 to 18 percent of chromium in steel, it not only makes more resistant to corrosion than martensitic steel but also makes it hardenable by heat treatment also. So such a steel has good resistance to electrolytic corrosion when it comes when it when it, when it contacts with non ferrous metals and graphite packing. So this is widely used as a this is widely used for pump shafts or spindles and walls as well as for many other fittings where a good combination of mechanical and corrosion properties are required. So we understand that this this has its applications also. Now the third type of stainless steel is austenitic stainless steel. They say that Okay, in this austenitic stainless steel, they 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 say that the chromium and nickel are there. So you can define this as the steels containing high content of both chromium and nickel are called as austenitic stainless steel. The first one was martensitic stainless steel. Second was ferritic stainless steel. The third is austenitic stainless steel. Now here the the third cat the of chromium in chemical composition of these steels like but the most widely used steel contain 18% chromium they they use contain 18% chromium and 8% nickel with carbon content as low as possible okay i repeat once again uh, the most widely used steel that contain 18% chromium and 8% nickel with carbon content as low as possible, and such a steel is commonly known as 18 oblique 8 steel. Okay, say an example of showing that uh, the, the steel contains high content of chromium and nickel, that is 18 8 steel. Okay, now these steels cannot be hardened by quenching. Okay, in fact, they are softened by rapid cooling. Okay, or from about 1000 degrees centigrade. So they are non-magnetic and possess greater resistance to corrosion, okay, and good mechanical properties at elevated temperature. So they these austenitic stainless steel they have their own properties, and a combination that they told about 18 oblique steel that is 18% chromium and 8% nickel with carbon content as well as possible, okay, and they they told that this these steels they are non-magnetic and they have great resistance to corrosion also. And good looking properties, but at elevated temperatures. Okay, let's go. Now, these steels are very tough and can be forged and rolled, but of a great difficulty in machining. Okay, they can be easily welded, but after welding, it is susceptible to corrosion attack in an area adjacent to the weld. Now, the, the, there are some good things that are also something also. They say that the, these are tough. Okay, you can forge them. You can roll them, but you cannot give up the difficulty in machining. Okay. You can easily weld them, but after welding, they have some they can they are uh, prone to corrosive attacks in an area adjacent to the welds. Okay, this susceptibility to corrosion that is uh, may be removed by softening after welding by heating to about one eleven hundred degrees centigrade and cooling rapidly. So you can you can remove this corrosive uh, issues by softening the 
after welding by heating this the workpiece to or the steel to about 1100 degrees centigrade and then cooling it instantly. Now this steel uh, are used in the manufacture of pump shafts, rail road, car trains and cell things, screws, nuts and bolts and small springs. So since 18 obligate steel provide excellent resistance to resistance to attack by many chemicals, therefore it is extensively used in chemical of food, the paper making and dyeing industry. So you can see this 18 obligate steel as its applications due to the resistance to attack by many chemicals. Okay. So it has found its application in either in the chemical industry of food or paper making or dyeing industry. Okay, so when then there is an increased corrosion resistance properties are required for some purposes. Then molybdenum from two to three percent, maybe other. Uh, we have studied in the last lecture that steel and the basic elements that we add in the steel to get some properties. So out of them also, there also the molybdenum was uh, uh, was told to be added in order to increase some corrosion resistance. Okay, so you can go. Now heat resisting steels, very uh, important topic in terms of you can say discussion. Okay, now these heat resisting steels are very important. Uh, these steels which can resist grief and oxidation at high temperature. Okay, these resist grief and oxidation at high temperature and retain sufficient strength. These are called as heat resisting steels. Okay. Now a number of heat resisting steels have been developed like uh, one is the low alloy steels. Okay. Now these steels they contain 0.5% of molybdenum and the main applications of steels are for super tubes and pipes in steam plants. Okay. Where the service temperatures are in the range of 400 degrees centigrade to 500 degrees centigrade. I repeat once again. Uh, the first type of uh, heat treat heat resistant steel is like low alloy steel, and they have around 0.5 percent of molybdenum on them. And they they uh, they have applications uh, like for superheated tubes and uh, pipes in steam plants, where the these the service temperatures are in the range of 400 degrees centigrade to 500 degrees centigrade. And then the valve steels, as the name says, valve steels. Okay. So that means they may have resistance to red heat. Okay, so let's uh, read about it. There are chromium silicon steels, okay, such as silchrome having 0.4% carbon or 8% chromium or 3.5% silicon, and Volmax having 0.5% carbon and 8% chromium and 3.5% silicon and 0.5% molybdenum. These are used for automobile valves okay these are used for automobile valves they have discussed about two such combinations of uh, chromium silicon steels and technical name is silchrome and volmax the silchrome has the combination of 0.4% carbon 8% chromium and 3.5% and the uh, volmax has the combination of 0.4.5% carbon and 8% chromium and 3.5% silicon and 0.5% molybdenum. Okay, these these are used for automobile valves, and they possess the good resistance to scaling at dull red heat, although their strength at elevated temperature is relatively low. So, for aeroplane engines and marine diesel engine valves, 13133 nickel chromium tungsten valve steel is usually used. So you can see that the application is here. That is that uh, for aeroplane engines and marine diesel engines, the 1313 that nickel chromium tungsten wall steel is usually used. Now the third kind of heat resistant steel is the frame chromium steel. Now frame chromium steel consists of the you know, first the uh, martensitic chromium steel with 12 to 13 percent chromium and ferritic chromium steel with 18 to 30 percent chromium. Here you can see that the, there is variation in the percentage of chromium, and due to that, it is uh, called as martensitic chromium steel or 
ferritic rhodium steel. Okay. Now these steels are very good for oxidation resistance at high temperatures as compared to their strength, which is not high at such conditions. The maximum operating temperature for martensitic steels is about 750 degrees centigrade, whereas for ferritic steels it is about 1000 to 1011, 1050 degrees centigrade. Okay. Now they say that this 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 is plain chromium steels. Okay. Now they they say that they have around two. They consist of two things. That is a mass martensitic chromium steels or ferritic chromium steels with the variation of chromium. Okay. And these they say that the steels have good oxidation resistance. Okay. At high temperature also. And the uh, maximum operating temperature that they give for martensitic steel is about. 750 degrees centigrade. Okay, and uh, the this ferritic steels having the chromium percentage of 18 to 30 percent chromium, yeah, operating temperature, operating temperature uh, at about 1000 to 1150 degrees centigrade. So this is you can see the difference in temperature is also there in when you talk about these two different types of steels. Okay, now austenitic chromium nickel steels. Now these steels they have Good mechanical properties at high temperature. These steels, austenitic chromium nickel steels, these steels have good mechanical properties at high temperature with good scaling resistance. So these alloys, these alloys contain a minimum of 18% chromium. These alloys, they contain a minimum of 18% chromium and 8% nickel. 8% nickel. Stabilized with titanium or niobium. Now they are, you can say, uh, in this is something new material called niobium. They say that these steels, austenitic chromium nickel steel, they they have good nickel properties at high temperature with good scaling resistance. Now these alloys, they have, they contain a minimum of 18% chromium and 8% nickel, stabilized with titanium or niobium. Now other carbide forming elements such as molybdenum or tungsten may also be added in order to improve creep strength okay if you want to uh, improve the creep strength you can add other elements like molybdenum or tungsten okay the, such alloys are suitable for use up to 1100 degrees centigrade and are used for gas turbine disc and fuels so you can see that addition of a element in a particular alloy automatically it increases the some, it, it adds to some property and it adds to some applications also. So like addition of molybdenum on tungsten in these alloys has, has helped to improve the creep strength and has made it suitable for temperatures up to 1100 degrees centigrade and it can be used in various gas turbine discs. Okay, it can be used in various gas turbine discs and blades. So you can see that the applications are gas turbine discs and blades. Now, Indian standard designation of high alloy steels, okay, stainless steel and heat resistant steels. So, according to the Indian standards, the high alloy steels, that is the stainless steel and the uh, heat resistant steels, as in designated in the following order. You see that there is the letter X in the first, and then the figure indicating 100 times the percentage of carbon content. Then you have the chemical symbol for alloying elements, each followed by a figure for its average percentage content rounded off to the nearest integer. Then you have the chemical symbol to indicate specially added element to allow the desired properties. Okay. Fourth point is important because you have if you want to add some element for achieving some properties then you have to add the chemical symbol of that. Then there is an example like X10, CR18, 9, 10, uh, and I10. Sorry, X10, CR18, Ni9 means that alloy steel having carbon at 0.10% and chromium 18% and nickel 9%. Okay. Now you have a table in the coming slide that shows the composition and uses of some types of stainless steel and heat resistant steels according to the Indian standards. Okay. Now this is a table which has the Indian standard designation of high alloy steels. Okay, and they say that in the first one we see that 30 CR30 
So they say that it has a carbon of around 0.262 and 0.35 and silicon. That is, we can see all the composition percentage of the various elements. Okay, that is there. And the last column is showing the the that applications of that. So the silicon in the first one is 1.0 maximum and manganese is 1.0 and nickel is also 1.0 and chromium is around 12.0 to 14.0. You can see that the, the percentage of chromium is all high in all such in all these elements in all these uh, elements. So to say that it is used for structural parts with high strength and kitchen utensils. You can see the application. Now the second, if you see that 15 Cr 16 Ni2. So it is like 0.1 to 0.2 percent carbon, 1.0 max silicon, 1.0 max manganese, 1.5 to 3.0 nickel. And chromium is 15.0 to 18.0. So you can see it has uh, it is used for aircraft fittings and windshield wiper arms or molding materials and paper machinery. So you can see the tremendous applications that is having with it. Now you see the fourth material like 04 CR17 nickel 12 MO2. Now it is like 0 0.08 max percent of carbon and 1.0 max of silicon and 2.0 max of manganese. And 10.5 to 14.0 of nickel and 16.0 to 16.0 to 18.5 of chromium, and then you have 2.0 to 3.0 molybdenum. Here in this in this table only this this uh, combination has molybdenum in it. So you can see that it is used for high temperature chemical handling equipments for rayon and rubber and marine industries and photographic developing equipments and pulp handling equipment and steam. Jack and petals and coke plants equipment and food processing equipment and edible oil storage tank. So such large high temperature chemical and equipment are this formation. So you can see that the industry is is already uh, using these kind of combination like these kinds of high alloy steels. Okay, then the this is there's the uh, then 45 uh, CR9 SI4. You can see that. In this, you can see that the carbon is 0.4 to 0.5, 0.4 and then silicon is 3.25 to 3.75. Now here, in this, the percentage of silicon is increased, and manganese is 0.3 to 0.6, and nickel is 0.005 maximum, and chromium is 7.5 to 9.5. Now the chromium is decreased here in this, and silicon has increased. So it is used for heat resistance outlet walls uh, of oil engines or lorries and cars. Okay, so the application is quite, uh, you can say, last. Okay, then you have the this last uh, uh, combination that is KTCR20 SI2. Okay, so we can and uh, I1. It is saying that uh, the this 0.75 to 0.85 it is percent of carbon, then 1.75 to 2.25 silicon, then 0.2 to 0.6 is manganese, and then uh, for nickel you have 1.2, 1.2 to 1.7 percent of nickel. And chromium is 19.0 to 21.0. Now you can see these applications uh, and applications are you also might be knowing that is used for highly stressed outlet walls in high speed carburetors and heavy oil engines. Okay, the applications are you can say heavy duty applications are there. Now high speed cool steels, high speed cool steels. Now these steels these are used for cutting metal at a uh, you can say these. Uh, uh, cutting metal at a high uh, cutting speed, okay, then ordinary carbon steels, uh, carbon tool steels. So, the, the carbon steel cutting tools do not retain their sharp cutting edge under heavier loads and heavy speeds, okay. Now, this is uh, we have studied about uh, alloy steels uh, normally in the previous slides, and we studied about three cutting steels also, okay. So, now we are going with the high speed tool steels. They say that these steels are used for cutting metals at high uh, cutting speed than ordinary carbon tool steels. Okay. Now the carbon steels cut, uh, cutting tools, the carbon steel cutting tools do not retain the cutting shape, that their sharp cutting edges under heavier load than higher speeds. This is due to the fact that, uh, that at high speeds sufficient heat may be developed during the cutting operation and causing the 
temperature of the cutting edge of the tool to reach a red heat. Okay. And understand that why the carbon steel cutting tools do not retain their sharp cutting edges. Okay, why they this this cutting tools they do not retain their sharp cutting edges under heavier loads and higher speeds. Now this temperature, this red heat, this temperature will soften the carbon tool steel, and thus the tool will not work efficiently for a longer period. Now the high speed steels have the valuable property of retaining their hardness even when heated to red heat. Now they are talking about high speed steels. Now most of the high speed steels contain tungsten as the chief following element. Okay, and the other elements like cobalt, chromium, vanadium, etc. may be present in some proportion. So I uh, will discuss with you some different types of high speed steels in the coming slides. Like the first one is like uh, 1841 high speed steel. Now, this steel on an average contains 18 percent tungsten, 4 percent chromium, and 1 percent vanadium. Okay, it is considered to be one of the best of all purple steels. Okay, it is widely used for drills, lathe, planer, and shaper tools. Okay, milling cutters, reamers, notches, threading dies. Punches, etc. So this kind of high speed, uh, high speed steel has, has tremendous amount of applications available. Okay, what this contains 18% tungsten, 4% chromium, and 1% vanadium. Okay, and you can see that it is as the best of all purpose tools. And the applications are like used for drills, lathe, planer, shaper tools, milling cutters, reamers. Brooches, uh, threading dies, and punches, reamers, etc. Now, second one is molybdenum high speed steel. Now, this steel on an average contains 6% tungsten, less than the first one. 6% molybdenum, now it is having molybdenum in it, 4% chromium, and 2% vanadium. Okay, one element molybdenum is increased in this, hence the name is molybdenum high speed steel. Now it has excellent toughness and cutting ability. Okay, the molybdenum high speed steel are better and cheaper than other types of steel. It is particularly used for drilling and shaping operation. See the addition of uh, you can say molybdenum has given its uh, new properties. Okay, and it has given its cheapness to it because obviously the tungsten percentage is reduced in it. But you can see that the applications are less. It is only used for drilling and Shaping operations. Okay, so molybdenum high speed steel has its own uh, applications, but if you compare with the 1841, the applications are in a, in a, you, can, you can count them in numbers. Okay, it has numerous applications. Okay, then let's go for the third kind of high speed steel that is the super high speed steel. Okay, now this this steel is also called cobalt. High speed steel because cobalt is added from 2 to 15 percent in order to increase the cutting efficiency, especially at high temperatures. So, if you want to do cutting or machining at high temperatures, you may have excess of super high speed steel. So, this steel on average contains 20 percent tungsten, 4 percent chromium, 2 percent vanadium. And 12% cobalt. Since the cost of the steel is more, obviously, therefore, it is principally used for heavy cutting operations which impose high pressure and temperatures on the tool. Okay, you can see that it's such a, uh, you can say, broad combination of various elements is there like tungsten, chromium, vanadium, cobalt. Like 20% of tungsten, 4% of chromium, 2% of vanadium. 12% of cobalt. So this 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 material has the cutting efficiency at temperatures, but due to the combination of such elements in high percentages, the cost of this high speed steel, super high speed steel, will be more. Okay, so it is usually used for heavy cutting operations. Okay, 
uh, in which you have the high pressure and temperatures. So it has it has it has it has high end applications. Okay. Now the Indian standard designation of high speed cool steam. Okay. Now you are going with the Indian standard specification. So according to the Indian standard, the high speed cool steam is designated into the following order. Like first one is the letter leg steam. Then the figure indicating 100 times the percent of carbon content, then the chemical symbol for allowing elements each followed by the figure for its average percentage content rounded off to the nearest integer. Then the chemical symbol to indicate specially added elements to attain the desired properties. And then they give you the example like for example XT 75W 18CR 4B1. It means a tool steel having average carbon content 0.75%, tungsten 18%, chromium 4%, and vanadium 1%. I repeat, XT75W18CR4B1. It means that the tool steel, the tool steel has average of carbon content 0.75%, tungsten 18%. Chromium 4% and vanadium 1%. Now, the coming table shows the composition of high speed cool steel as per Indian standards. Okay, for knowledge. So, let's go to the table. Now, Indian standard designation of high speed steel, okay, according to the this, their standard they have shown. So, there are, you can see the chemical composition percentage is that is, various elements are listed in, in this table. Like carbon is there, silicon, manganese, chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, tungsten, cobalt, so much elements have increased in this to high speed tool steel. And on the left column, you can see various uh, components available. Okay, and the uh, hardness is revealed on the last column on the right hand side. Okay, in the annealed condition. Okay, so this is there. Now you can see in the first combination like XT7 7 41. So it has the carbon contents of like 0 0.65 to 0 0.8. Then you have silicon like 0 0.15 to 0 0.4, and manganese is like 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, and then chromium is 0 0.3.75 to 4.5. Then when in the point name is not in this, then vanadium is there from 1.0 to 1.25. Then tungsten is there 7.5 to 19.0. Then no cobalt, and it has its own hardness that is 255. So here the various combinations are given. Okay, in this. Now one of the most uh, good combination that is the third combination if you see XT eight zero W. Okay, XT eight zero W twenty C U nineteen uh, sorry twelve C R four V two M O one. So what does this uh, combination mean? That it is a carbon of 0 0.75 to 0 0.85 and silicon is 0 0.15 to 0 0.4. Then manganese is 0.2 to 0.4, chromium is 4.0 to 4.75, molybdenum is 0.4 to 1.0, no, vanadium is 1.25 to 1.75, tungsten is 19.5 to 21.0, and cobalt is 11.0 to 12.5. Now you can see the hardness is the maximum of this uh, combination. Out of the all the listed combinations, okay, you can see the uh, the value at T zero two. It has the highest value of all these elements. Okay, then you go with the next uh, you can say uh, combination that is uh, of the fourth number at XT twelve point one two five twelve point five W C O ten C R MO4 V3. So it has carbon of 1.2 to 1.3, silicon 0.15 to 0.4, manganese 0.2 to 0.4, then chromium 3.75 to 4.75, then molybdenum 3.0 to 4.0, and vanadium 2.8 to 3.5, then tungsten 8.8 to 10.7, and cobalt 8.8 to 10.7. It has this, this has the value of brittle hardness. Slightly less than the third one. Now uh, you can see with the variation of cobalt and tungsten, uh, the 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 results are seen that the 
hardness is how it is uh, you can say uh, difference between the third and the fourth combination okay so every element every combi uh, element that is added in every in the chemical composition is has its own properties has its own uh, you can say uh, you can say uh, imparting of certain uh, properties to the composition okay like if you go with this uh, the the second last combination that is xt 9 90 w 6 co mo5 cr4 v2 okay a carbon of 0.85 2.95 and then silicon 0 0.15 to 0.4 and then manganese like 0.2 to 0.4 then chromium 3.75 to 4.75 and then molybdenum at 4.75 to 5.5 and then vanadium 1.7 to 2.2 then tungsten 5.75 to 6.75 then cobalt to 4.75 to 5.25. So here you can see the business hardness is 269. So it has, it has remained the same as the fourth element, but you can compare, if you compare both that, that there is difference in the combinations. There is difference in the percentages of the various elements. Okay. So, but the hardness is coming the same. So depending upon the applications, what we require, we normally go uh, with that. Okay. Now the next spring steels. Spring steels are very important when you discuss about this thing. So uh, the most suitable material for springs are those which can store up to maximum amount of work or energy in a given weight. Okay. In a given weight or volume of spring material without permanent deformation. I repeat. In spring steel is the most suitable material. The most suitable material for springs are those which are which can store up the maximum amount of work or energy in a given weight or volume of spring material without permanent deformation. Okay, so these steels have a high elastic limit as well as high reflection deflection value also. So the various types of spring steels are like high carbon steels, as you can see here, and the chrome vanadium steels and Silicon manganese steels. So these uh, I will discuss later on, but let me get to the uh, MCQ first. Okay. MCQ. Right now. For the steels which they can resist creep and oxidation at high temperature and retain sufficient strength, these are called as heat resistant steels. These are called as heat resistant steels okay then let's go uh, uh, we have discussed about this heat resisting steels in the uh, nervous slides in, in this lecture okay so the high speed tool steels are used for cutting metals at a much higher cutting speed than the ordinary carbon tool steel so it is true or false i think it's true now the chromium steels containing 12 to 14 percent chromium and 1.12 to 0.35 percent carbon are the first stainless steel developed. Okay, since these steels possess martensitic structure, therefore they are called as martensitic stainless steel. We have discussed about this type of martensitic stainless steel in our slides, so I think it's true. It's true. So in the materials, this contains sulfur and phosphorus. And these steels have higher sulfur content than other carbon steels and in general the carbon content of the steel vary from 0.1 to 0.45 and sulfur from 0.08 to 0.3 percent so what do we call it we call it as free cutting steels okay we call this as free point free cutting steels okay 0.08 to 0.3 percent sulfur in this free cutting steels now these steels containing greater amount of chromium okay uh, that is from 16 to 18 percent and about 0.12 percent carbon. These are called as ferritic stainless steel. Now we have discussed about martensitic stainless steel and now we are going to a ferritic stainless steel. So this has chromium uh, like from 16 to 18 percent. Okay. And uh, carbon is less in this that is 0.12 percent. So I think it's true. This is ferritic stainless steel. The answer is true. Yeah. 
Now engineering materials, the ferritic stainless steels have better corrosion resistance property than martensite stainless steel. Now, uh, when we were discussing about these two kinds of steel, then also we have come across this conclusion that this ferritic stainless steel, these have better corrosion resistance property than the martensite stainless steel. So it is true. Then in engineering materials, the steels containing high content of both chromium and nickel are called austenitic stainless steel. Okay, they contain high content of chromium and nickel. So these are called as austenitic stainless steel. So I think it's it's true. These uh, uh, means the austenitic stainless steel obviously they are famous for the high content of chromium and nickel. So it is true in this case. So the steel containing high content of both chromium and nickel they are called as austenitic stainless okay, steels. So true. Now molybdenum high content steel on an average contains six percent tungsten, six percent molybdenum, four percent chromium, and two percent vanadium, which has excellent toughness and cutting ability. So as the name says, molybdenum high speed steel. So uh, if you compare with all the high speed steel, only this uh, element name has molybdenum high speed steel and it has 6% molybdenum in it. So I think it's true. If the answer is true. Now in the living materials, it prohibits grain growth and increases the uh, depth of hardening of quenched steel and confers the property of remaining hard even when heated to head color. So this is uh, tungsten. The answer is tungsten. Okay, the answer is C. Now in the living materials, the most suitable material for springs are those which can store up the maximum amount of work or energy in a given weight or volume of spring steel without permanent deformation. So when we were discussing about springs just a few um, uh, moments ago, so we think that this is true because uh, it can store up the maximum amount of work or energy. Okay, and uh, so it is true in this case. So answer is A. So we have discussed our lecture to the uh, best that we can and we have discussed about uh, high speed cool steels and heat resisting steels, valve steels and uh, so far we have discussed about the various combinations and uh, I think that uh, if we refer these books and uh, the contents if you read also increase your knowledge and uh, you will have an in-depth knowledge of all these topics and after listening to this lecture also your knowledge will be more enlightened so for now thank you for having me